Hello everyone and welcome back into another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing another ability card build. Today's is actually going to be a team medic, so a combat medic for when you're playing any posse based, uh, I guess, group events. So the one that comes to mind for me is Call to Arms. So recently me and my posse have been playing a lot of Call to Arms. If uh, you watch my streams every Saturday then you'd probably know that. But uh, one of the things that is almost never filled is the team medic role. And there's actually some pretty sweet ability cards that you can pair together along with some nice weapons and an outfit that make this a very, very feasible thing. So that's what I've put together today. So if you find yourself enjoying this video at any point along the line or just uh, find it useful in any way, definitely leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Otherwise, let's just dive right on into it and start off with the weapons that I recommend for this build. So the first weapons that I'm gonna recommend are your sidearms and you're gonna have two holsters on this so you can have two sidearms because it is important even though you're a medic to be able to defend yourself and others. And my first recommendation is the Lamat revolvers because you pop these bad boys on, they're decently accurate but they have nice high damage. Plus you have the option to switch over to the shotgun. So if you decide you have to go revive a downed companion, maybe swap over onto your shotguns. So it's kind of like having uh, sawed off shotguns equipped, even though uh, you could switch it back and then you've got nice high capacity, real high damage uh, revolvers that you'll be able to use. So uh, it really depends on what you like doing, but uh, the Navy revolver might also be a good option. But I think the Lamat go really well with this build. So that's why my first uh, weapon recommendation is dual wielding Lamats. If you don't like using the Lamat revolvers, or maybe you just want your sidearms to be more standalone shotgunny, then the sawed off shotguns are the next best option to dual wield. Either that or you could do a combination of the two. But the sawed off shotguns, especially when equipped with slugs, are really, really effective at short to medium range combat. And considering when you're going to revive a downed opponent, you might have to kill some people on the way, and oftentimes they're going to be up very close because they just downed one of your uh, allies, the sawed off shotguns make a good option. They make it very easy to clean up the streets from anyone that might be getting between you and the person you're trying to revive. So the sawed-off shotguns are an option. Personally, I think the Lamats are better, but the sawed-offs would work as well. Next, since this is a call to arms build, essentially, I mean, it can be used for lots of stuff, but call to arms is probably where it's the most important. Uh, I like to have a repeater equipped because that helps you with basically every range of combat. When you get out to long range, if you don't have a scope equipped, it's not super useful unless you're using paint it black, which we won't be for this build. But for short and medium range, the repeater is excellent. And the Evans repeater is just really the best when it comes down to it. It's got excellent accuracy, a nice fast reload speed, it holds a ton of rounds, it's got pretty decent damage, it's not the highest, but it's got pretty decent damage and the range is also pretty good. So the Evans is going to be your, your standard weapon when you're not running to heal someone, the Evans is kind of going to be the backbone of this build because it, it's going to keep you alive for a long time and you're going to be able to use it a lot. So that's why I like the Evans repeater for this build. Then finally our last weapon is going to be a shotgun. So like I said, uh, you can you could dual wield sawed offs and then maybe you could have something else for this one, but you're gonna want a shotgun as at least an option. And since the main place where I see myself using a shotgun when using this build is, like I said, when you're going to revive someone or maybe just clearing an area so you can get to them or something like that, uh, fire rate is gonna be important. And the semi-auto shotgun has the best fire rate out of all the shotguns. It also has a decently high ammo capacity. I think it holds five rounds and uh, damage and accuracy and all that sort of stuff are all pretty decent. So this is gonna be the best shotgun for this build. And like I said, I I prefer to go with the Lamats over the Sawdoffs, so for me, I want to use the semi-auto shotgun. So, in, in summary, the weapons for this build should be dual-wielding Lamats, and then the Evans Repeater, and the semi-auto shotgun. Alright, and so here we have our outfit for this build, and it's going to be, I mean, you can tell I'm going for sort of a doctor vibe. I consider doing a military one since it's a field medic, but I think this works very well. So let me show you the items that make up this outfit. For the hat, we have the white woolen hat. I think it's an obvious choice because it kind of looks like a surgical cap. I included some Kenwick glasses to really sell the uh, idea that this is a doctor because you know glasses make sense for that. Again we don't have a surgical mask so the plain white bandana is our best option. For the coat I choose to use the uh, white Walden coat. There's a couple different ones that work but I think this one works the nicest. It kind of helps imitate the lab coat ideal of a doctor. For the vest I guess this one really comes down to personal choice. I decided to use the Richfield vest. I wasn't going at first I wasn't going to have a vest and then I was going to use one of the uh, little bit more dingy looking vests but then I was like you know uh, if we're sticking with the doctor theme white and red are the general ideas so I kind of like the red vest for it. Then for the shirt, the clean white everyday shirt. For the gloves, we have the white variant of the riding gloves. For the gun, uh, well, the weapon equipment, we have the studded bandit gun belt, and I went with the white variant, and then the matching offhand holster. For the pants, we have the white clerk pants. And then finally, for the footwear, we have the black Burnham boots. And that is the entire right outfit. Like I said, it's uh, sort of a mix between a Western-themed doctor and a modern doctor, so we've got a surgical mask and a surgical cap kind of looking thing, but we're not wearing scrubs or something like that. And then we have the red and white theme of like a World War II 
wear a doctor. So it's got a lot of stuff all mashed together, but I think it gives you a unique look and helps it have that high visibility so when your friend is downed and about to die, they can see you coming and know that you're at least trying to help them. So we've got a nice high visibility white doctor outfit, but let's move on to the ability cards themselves. So for the ability cards, we're going to start off with the Deadeye card, and for Deadeye, we're using quite an inspiration. And so this one just says, while Deadeye is active, you and your allies quickly regenerate health. If more than one member of your team has the ability active, the effects do not stack. So this one's not a card that most people have equipped, but if you're a dedicated medic, it makes sense to have this card as your card, because it's just going to help you and everyone else on your team constantly be regenerating health. While you're not going to revive people, you're going to want to have this Deadeye card active as often as possible. Whether that's popping tonics or doing something else, you're going to want to make sure that you've got plenty of Deadeye filled up and you're using it because it's going to help you and your entire team heal. Or, inversely, you can make sure you're communicating with your team and ask, hey, does anyone need to heal? And if someone is like low on health or they're in a firefight or they're being shot at a lot, you could pop this on and you just might save their life and prevent them from ever getting down. So quite an inspiration is the Deadeye card for this build. Our first passive card is going to be Strength in Numbers, and this one says you take much less damage for every nearby ally, up to a maximum of three allies. So this one is going to be an awesome card. I mean, everybody could do this one if you're playing Call to Arms with a Posse. This one is kind of a smart one to have because if you've got four people playing and you're all in that town, those all count as nearby allies as far as I know because I've tried this one out and I've noticed a decent boost from playing in most Call to Arms modes, especially if you're kind of hanging out near someone. Uh, this one is a no-brainer, but it also is great for this because it's going to give you a sweet health boost and since you're going to be using this card to help other people, you're probably going to be near them pretty frequently. So it just makes a lot of sense to use this one because it's going to be helping you stay alive. And you don't want your medic to die because then everyone else is basically screwed. So Strength in Numbers is the first passive card that I recommend for this ability card build. For our second passive card, we're going to be using Take Away the or Take the Pain Away. And this one says whenever you revive someone, you both take much less damage for the next 8 seconds. So this one is absolutely essential. When you're going to revive someone, quite often times you're still going to be under fire and they might still be under fire. So you don't want it to happen where you sprint across the map, you get to your ally, you revive them, and the moment they stand up, you both die because you take a bunch of fire and you both die. So take the pain away is going to make it so that you both take a lot less damage after you've revived them. So basically it'll give you enough time to pop a tonic or kill the enemy that's shooting at you or just get out of there. So so take the pain away is essential for anyone who's going to be a dedicated medic because it's going to make it so that you actually are able to successfully revive someone. Not just go over there, sprinkle some cocaine on them, and then both die. So that's why take the pain away takes the second passive card spot. And for our third spot, we have eye for an eye. And the reason we have this one is because we're going to want to maximize dead eye. And so this one is just killing an enemy with a headshot restores a lot of dead eye. And that's why we have the Evans repeater on here because you're going to want to make sure that you've got your dead eye full all the time. And if you don't want to waste a bunch of tonics, this is a great way to do it because you're going to be using uh, you're, you know, whenever you're not going to heal someone, you just make sure you're focusing on getting dead uh, headshots, whether that's while you're in dead eye or just running around, because it's going to help keep your dead eye meter nice and full. So all of these cards help each other out, and they all make, in my opinion, the best team medic build or the best combat medic build. And uh, it's especially great for Call to Armed. So just uh, to quick summarize, uh, this this loadout is specifically designed to boost the entire team survivability in game modes like Call to Armed. Quite an inspiration is a dead eye ability that is going to regenerate your health and the other players on the team. So it's this is where the whole build starts. It makes sense that you're going to be giving yourself and everyone else on the team a sweet health boost with this card whenever dead eye is active. And then when you combine that with take the pain away, that one is going to help you revive people because, like I said, uh, you're going to take much less damage, and so is the other person right after you revive. And it's going to give you enough time to either get away, pop a tonic, or shoot your enemies. Strength in numbers then is great because it's going to help you take much less damage for all the nearby allies and so, since this is a support build you're probably going to be near people all the time so it makes sense to keep this card active so you take less damage and then like I said eye for an eye is essential to make sure that you constantly have enough dead eye to keep quite an inspiration on as often as possible. I hope you liked this video if you did go ahead and click that like button and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel because you know I release pretty consistent content on a daily basis and it'll help you stay up to date on all of that. If you have any comments questions concerns maybe problems that you have with this build leave those down in the comment section below it'll uh you know it's just a great place to start that type of discussion and of course if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications that way you can stay up to date on everything i release on a daily basis with all that in mind thanks a ton for watching i hope you enjoyed the video but we'll see you next time thanks for watching another dare to game video if you like this video please leave a like and a comment if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like my content and would like to support this channel consider becoming a member today for as little as 1.99 a month it makes a huge difference but in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day.
I'll see you next time.